The thing that Neil really cared about, that the studio really cared about, is honoring Ellie and, and Joel specifically, and their journey as characters. Like I've said previously, we're gonna talk about this topic, and today is the day we do. Haley is officially the hype man for part 2. What Anthony and her said about the game, it's just... All the nights I've slept bad, all the thoughts I've had while taking shits. Hey, I think the most when I take a doodoo and try to sleep. But yeah, we are almost at the finish line. Thinking about how Naughty Dog could honor Ellie and Joel, it leads me to mainly think of one thing and a few others that I'll mention later in the video, so stick around. But the main way I see Joel and Ellie being honored by Naughty Dog is from a story standpoint. And what I'm thinking about, you've probably heard me mention a few times if you've been around the channel. And if you're new, welcome to the channel. Feel free to join the Deck Gang by subbing with all notifications. But enough! beating around the bush. Let's get into what way I think Joel and Ellie will be honored. On the next Dragon Ball Z. Okay, for real this time. So I think this is gonna be story related. I think this is gonna be a story standpoint. I've mentioned this a long time now in many videos. What I do think this might mean, Ellie confronts Joel fully about his lie and he breaks and admits what he did. In part one, you could see the doubt in Ellie's eyes. There was obviously a part of her back then that didn't believe Joel, and I think there's still a part of her that still doesn't believe Joel. And like I've said many times, I'm sorry if I sound like a broken record, but we're talking about honoring and hemming him and whom, and this is what I think it will boil down to. Whatever traumatic event that happened in the cabin, might ignite Ellie to fully confront Joel and have that lie come back full circle in Ellie and Joel's story. Ah. If they don't even touch slightly upon a lie in game and you know it doesn't play a part in part two, I'm not gonna lie, I would be kind of disappointed. I've said plenty of times that I think it'll happen at this scene right here, or even this scene right here, goodness forbid. Either Ellie herself confronts Joel about the lie after the cabin event, or while they're on revenge, Joel tries to stop her from continuing this reckless journey, so he tries to shift the blame onto himself in hopes of stopping Ellie. I don't think Ellie would knock Ellie out and like physically stop her, you know, by tying her up and dragging her all the way back to Jackson. I think he loves, you know, he loves her too much and he wouldn't want to do that unless, you know, he had no, no other option. So I think before he would even think about trying that, I think that he would, yeah, tell the truth to, in an attempt to get her to stop. Like I've said before, <laughs> oh, okay, maybe he's like, you know, like I've said plenty of times. Kiddo, the world could have been different if it wasn't for me. I stopped any chance of the cure. This is on me. I don't know how to, yeah, I don't know, but yeah. Oof, that would be, oof, from a story, how many whom, that would be shibbly boo boom. Oof. If you know what I mean, you know what I mean. Could be, seemingly, too, why they split up here. Maybe Joel tells her here, and she's like, fuck you, peace out. Or, like I said in my breakdown video, which, ah, please, no, don't do this. What if they split up here, not because Joel revealed the truth, but just simply because he asked her to stop. And then they reunite. And this time Joel tries to stop her once again, and he tells her the truth. And then, please know, Ellie blames him for what happened in the cabin, and then this, I would not know, no. But Ellie looks so sad. I, ah, you can check my breakdown video. Fuck, let's get that out of my head, man. Uh, uh, mm, I hope they don't go that route. But Neil has said part one was about love, and part two will be about hate. Um. Yeah, if, if the first game was really like the core of it, the theme was about the love between these two characters and how we build that through story, music, interaction, gameplay mechanics. 
Um, this story is the counter of that. The story is about hate and how we use all those same things to make the player feel that. Um, oh, so like I've said plenty of times, what if Ellie grows to hate Joel, the person she once loved? Better not. But yeah, I know I mentioned those two things, those two theories, outcomes that I can think of plenty of times. But for like the way I see honoring, like honoring Ellie and Joel, when Haley said that, I think they'll do that from a story standpoint. I don't think she means like honoring them by, you know, their lives going well and they're living out the rest of the days happy. You know, otherwise you have no conflict in the story and you wouldn't have the cabin scene at all. I mean, we know there's going to be conflict. We know there's going to be, but you get my point, you know what I'm saying? You can honor somebody still from a story standpoint, you know, I don't, yeah, shit, I can't even talk. I'm sorry, we've never been professional out here. I've repeated plenty of times. I have keywords written, but I can't. I just, I stumble across my thoughts everywhere. Emotional theories, I don't do well with them. <sighs> but yeah. But yeah, that's the main outcome I can think of. That's the main possibility I think of when I hear that. Having what happened in part one fully played upon, coming back in part two full circle type shit like that. So the other things, like small ways I see Joel and Ellie being honored, like... Maybe they do kill every last one of them, whatever group Wong Delhi. Maybe we can sit on like a hill playing guitar, singing together while we watch whoever wronged us being burned to the ground, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, sitting there like a bittersweet ending, yeah, we went through hell but finally paid off. Now we're sitting here, burning hill, burning community, sitting on the hill, ding ding ding, guitar, pull away at our sixth string. Or, we have a time skip where Ellie is a leader of Jackson somehow, some way. We're like, yeah, you know, she helping out, she, yeah. Maybe, yeah, maybe we got Joel, that's a grumpy old man, smoking his pipe, you know, yeah. <laughs> but this would have to be after whatever conflict happens, because obviously, like, yeah. But yeah, you can honor Joel and Ellie with, you know, happy days type of deal, after they go through the conflict and after they walk through hell and make it sort of say, yeah. Otherwise, you know, what, yeah. But to summarize, when they say honoring Ellie and Joel, I think that's from a story standpoint. And the outcomes that I can think of are the ones that I just mentioned. But those are my thoughts. Now what about yours? Like, share, sub with the bell if you're new. Man, I do this outro every day, holy shit. I should, I should just copy paste the audio file instead of, yeah, nah, but anyway, and just survive and I'll see you when I see you.